The debate over 50 or 25 is precisely the kind of risk my next guest says could jeopardize a soft landing. Joining me now is Michael Cugino. He's president and portfolio manager of the Permanent Portfolio Family of Funds. So you, you don't, what do you not like about this, Michael? Welcome. Good afternoon, Kelly. Um, well, I think the, de the discussion that was just had was pretty comprehensive, actually. And it, like, there's a lot of smart people on all sides of this. My view would be Fed credibility. And uh, you know, if you look at the, the rate history the last couple of years, a very aggressive move in 22, and a lot more data dependent, let's watch and wait, let's read the data over the last year, year and a half or so. I think they've done a good job of building back some credibility that maybe they lost in the previous several years. And I would be careful not to fritter that away by doing too much too soon when it may not be necessary. There's no question that the neutral rate is way lower than we are right now. That argues for a cut at some level. Um, the data doesn't yet support an aggressive move, in my view. And if you move too aggressively, you risk losing credibility. I would probably start cautiously. Um, and want, continue to watch the data and see what happens. Keep in mind, you still had a GDP number that was pretty strong during the summer. Absolutely. You got corporate earnings coming out. You got a very divisive presidential and congressional election coming out. There's going to be a lot more data coming in the next few months. You don't need to do it all at once. You can start gradually and continuing, and you know, and continue to go from there. And for what it's worth, Ed Hyman yesterday changed his case from a hard landing to a soft one, and he's been um, much more concerned about the economy lately. So even to see a data point like that tells you that the evolving outlook is one where you could see this the, the economy doing okay. We talked to Binky Chada yesterday, and he said he looks at S&P revenue growth and things that bottomed five or six quarters ago and is now looking okay. I, but I want to ask you, actually, Michael, about something totally different, which is what is the message from gold right now? I know you must be thrilled to see it hitting new highs, but what is that telling us? Well, we're believers in gold all the time. So I, I think it's very predictable. Um, you've got the Fed at the top of the rate height cycle, likely coming down. You've got the U.S. dollar has been incredibly strong over the last decade or more. That's not going to last forever. That's going to decline. You've got an increasing case around the world of an alternative currency to the U.S. dollar, which would, again, further reduce the value of the dollar. Um, you have inflation that still is somewhat sticky, uh, you know, and there's no there's no definitive answer that it might not trend up a little from here either. That's another thing to be careful of. We think it's coming down. We're all assuming it's coming down. But, it, you know, it's still sticky between that two and a half, three percent. And the producer number was even a little bit bigger than that. So maybe not so fast. Um, and geopolitical risk and uncertainty. So when you add all that up together, it makes for a very compelling um, case for gold. And if rates do, in fact, get cut, especially aggressively, as some people have have mentioned, and by the way, I'm not there with those aggressive cuts yet. I don't think we've seen enough data to support it. But let's say that that's where it goes. Then you start getting to a point where real interest rates begin to trend back towards zero and possibly negative again. Exactly. And gold very well in that environment. You know, I was I was pulling that up as you said that just the 10 year tips as a proxy, and that yield has gone from two and a half percent, so call it the the real rate at the end of last year, to one and a half percent now. That's been extremely supportive of gold's outperformance, and some say that is a historical correlation. Do you expect real rates to keep falling then in order to support gold prices moving higher? Well, I think it's uncertain at this time. So much of that depends on the Fed and market conditions. And again, there's so much data going both ways, as you alluded to. The economy doesn't look like it's falling off a cliff right now, and there's data that supports that. On the other hand, the labor market is slowing. There's some issues with some banks with respect to credit card debt, auto loan debt, et cetera, that bears watching. The commercial credit, um, you know, refinancing of a lot of commercial loans and, and real estate loans is maybe a little bit uncertain. Corporate earnings appear to be decent, but, you know, that can change quickly. Company outlooks have been very mixed, and certain industries have been getting hit uh, worse than others. So I think there's a lot of mixed data out there, which makes yeah. predicting the interest rate environment much harder. The other thing on gold to keep in mind is that the explosion of the U.S. deficit, mm -hmm. um, whether that leads to the uncertainty argument or just the creation of more dollars and 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 money, is also bullish for gold. Absolutely. I, I, I can't disagree there. By the way, there are a couple of stocks you like to want to mention before we go. Costco, Lockheed Martin, you say companies that can control their cost structures and pricing power. But I think a lot of people are very interested in whether gold and silver up 25, 28 percent this year will continue to rally. Michael, we'll leave it there. I appreciate your time.